Hi everyone, JB here at Websites for Beginners and we are looking at multi-buttons. This is a block add-on from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, the same guys who bring you Astra Brainstorm Force. As much as I want to give this block a five ferocious cats rating, I'm going to be very cruel and cut it in half and give it two and a half cats. Cruel not because I'm giving it a two and a half, but cruel because I need to cut a cat in half. The reason for that will become clear very soon. Here I have a site with the multi button applied and it looks absolutely stunning, but it has one massive drawback. Let's go into the page and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'll bring in a new block so that you can see how you can work with it and I'll point out the caveat. Having said that, I still think you can make this and you can make it look good. The reason I'm giving it that two and a half deductions is because it's going to take you more work than it should. Over here, we have the multi buttons. I'm going to where do I go here and I'm going to look for it. I'll type in multi pass, Lilo multi pass, multi buttons. And that's from your ultimate add ons blocks. Click on it and you have it over here. The first thing I want you to note is when you go up here to the change alignment, you have the option to put it on left, which it currently is for that one. You have right. OK, and I can go through that and then also full width. Now, the first reason it loses a point is that when I put it on full width, you will see that my text is flush to the left. I have no control over that, trying to get the text in the middle or to the right. This is something that they should add because when I want to go full width, I would like to have my text here in the middle. I think on the left looks good, but in the middle would be better. In case if you're confused why it's only this width, it's because these are two columns that you actually have here. So this is only in one column. Let's go and change the color first so that you can have a better idea of what's going on here. And then you're going to understand why I deduct more points for this specific block. So when you go over here and you want to look for colors, you're going to find that the colors are set separately for each and every block. Okay, now you may say that's only half a point. So if I go to the first block, and let's say for the text, I want to make it white and the background color I'm going to leave like so. And then the border also white. We, we can still go for that. And then for hover, we change it around. Let's say the background. So we're going to leave the text black and we're going to make the background white. Uh, let me just see. I got everything. So when I hover over it, there we go. That's that's fine. Now, if you want to change the color for the second one, let's click. Let's go up here. Close button settings, go to button settings two, and then scroll down. So now we want to do the opposite text color, uh, white border color. Let's make the border also white and then click on hover over here. And then text is going to be white. Background is going to be empty. So click on clear. And then what are we going to do for the border hover? Let me see. It's going to be. And now how do I get it to be transparent? So background hover color, I don't have a transparency slider here. So what I'll do is I'll grab my color picker and I'll sample the background and I'll copy that code and then go to background color while we're in hover and I'll paste it over here. Let's see if that works. That works perfectly, Johnny. And then border, I'll put it on white. Okay. So actually you are thinking and telling me JP, but this is great. I still don't get your gripe with it. So let's understand gripe number one is that I cannot align this text when it is set over here. Where am I? Over here to full width. If I put it in the center, it looks like this. Let's put it to the left. Okay. To change the text, simply select the text. Let's call it first button or button number one. Button number one. And then for this one, button number two. Good. So very similar to the one at the top. Let's see what we've got now. So click on it to interact with it. That's very important when working with blocks in the Gutenberg WordPress editor. The first one you have at the top is button count. And I'm not going to increase it yet. I'll do that at the end to show you why it gets the rating it gets. If we go to general, let's skip the button settings. 
We have font family, which you can change here, and you can change the gap between the windows, similar to that one up there. Hmm. Now my next question is, how do I increase the space within the button, the padding? Hmm. Where is that? It seems you have to do that each and every time for each and every button separately. So if I go to button number one and I make the padding at the top and the bottom 15, and I make the padding on the left and the right, let's say something like 40, my button looks like this. Nice. But what do I do with button two? It appears that when you go to button two and you go in now, you have to do that again manually. So if I go to button padding, I'll have to type in again 15 for that one and 40. And this is where I'm starting to say, why isn't that under general? So that I can apply those settings to both buttons at the same time. Now I have to remember it and I have to go back and forth, especially if I come back in the future. And let me show you what I want to do next. So if we talk about the font size, so we go to button number one. Let's first play here. Font size, let's increase that and see where we are. Let's put that on 18. Then I have to remember that and go to button number two. And I have to type in 18 for that one. And then if I go to button number one again, and I want to change the border, change it maybe to a thicker border, I'll have to remember that. And then if I want to make changes over here to responsiveness, to tablet and mobile, I'll have to remember that and go to button number two and do that. And to continue on this little path we're going down, let's go now to button count. And if I increase it to three, don't worry about the fact that it's breaking to a second line. Do you see that none of those settings in terms of the font size and height and line height, etc., are applied to the new button? It comes in with those at default. So now if I want to get it to look the same like these and I didn't write it down and I don't have a memory that good, I need to go back to button one. Or what? Where did I get it? Font size 18 and then go back to button three, font size. Okay. And I'll just bring in a spacer as well. Spacer, spacer, spacer. Let's spacer go up one. And then where are we here? One more up to the columns, columns here. And then how do I get <laughs> column one? Let's put the column one on, okay, just to give it a little bit more space so that we can see how this will look on the front. Preview. And you see, this is what we are running into. So button number two at 18. Look at button number three, uh, put it on 18. That cannot be 18. It just cannot be 18. I can see clearly that that is an 18. Look at that. I, I have no idea. I am increasing the size of button three. It just doesn't do it. Let's preview it again. Maybe it changes on the front end. Yep, it did change on the front end, but it's not changing on the back. Let's put it back on 18, update. Not the way I want to work. I'll say that very openly. It's one of the reasons when you work with blocks and editors and page builders is you want things to be intuitive. Two buttons, they are going to get you there with the least frustration. But if you are going to bring in more than two buttons and you're going to do a lot of styling to them, you're going to run in a lot of frustration, especially when you start looking at those buttons on different devices with different displays like tablets and with mobile. So. Guys, I would recommend go back to this block, and I'm not talking to you who's viewing this video, I'm talking to the developers, and see if you can have some different way of approaching this, maybe the padding, all of those things to put that under general, and that you can have that here, 
apply that to all of the buttons at the same time and then you can have overall settings for each of the individual buttons i think at the end the only thing that you're really going to change from one button to the next is the color the backgrounds the hover effect the borders and the text and that that's fine here but font size line height those things i would drop under general so this block needs a little bit of cleaning up it doesn't get the seal of approval even though when you are going to spend the time on making two buttons it's a thumbs up still we give it two and a half because we think you're going to get the job done and 50 percent means you basically got there now wow us then we take the two halves we put them together throw in a few more and we get a five ferocious cats rating this is jp here at websites for beginners signing off see you in the next video